Hello and welcome to episode 2 of my trophy guide for Elden Ring. We first want to make our way around and into Mount Galmir to pick up an important sorcery and more upgrade materials. Travel north until you reach the Earth Tree Gazing Hill Side of Grace, next to which you can also find another golden seed. From here we will now make a long trip counterclockwise around Mount Gelmir. Follow me north where we will encounter another boss. It summons gigantic skeletons but by following my path they should not hit you. If they do then you will die in one hit, but there is a grace right before and right afterwards as well with the Seathwater River grace. Follow me further north and be aware of the geysers. They will also kill you if you get too close and their hitbox is quite massive, so take it slow if you want to be safe. There is also another golden seed to pick up in this ravine. At the end of it you can find the Seathwater Terminus Grace to secure your progress. Follow me south from here and across the lake of lava. You can easily traverse it on horseback. Torrent will only take small amounts of chip damage. Once you reach the grazing herd of sheep, you can also find the craftsman's shack graze to my right inside a shed. Follow me through Hermit Village and past yet another boss to find the primeval sorcerer Azur. Quit out or use the primeval sorcerer Azur grace to reset the enemies chasing you and then talk to the man. He will hand you the Comet Azur Sorcery. This is one of 7 legendary spells we have to pick up to obtain the Legendary Sorceries and Incantations trophy. Now follow me as we continue to circle around Mount Galmir a second time, slowly ascending to its peak.
right straight towards the ladder and climb it to avoid the grafted scion. After climbing the third ladder, you can finally find the ninth Mount Galmir campsite grace across a wooden bridge. Use the spirit spring and circle counterclockwise around the crater to avoid the boss and jump off to the west. Watch out for the marionettes with bows as they can sometimes hit you even while on horseback and several arrows in succession will kill you. Pick up the golden seed and make a U-turn to find Volcano Manor straight ahead of you. Enter it and activate the Volcano Manor side of grace. Talk to Lady Teneth, who is sitting close to the Grace and choose to join Volcano Manor to obtain the drawing room key. Use it to open the first room on the right of the nearby hallway and enter it to reveal a hidden path. In here it's very dark but you only have to run straight to pass through the first room. To traverse the second room safely you want to run slightly to the right. You can alternatively take it slow and cycle through the room counterclockwise to avoid the enemy and find the exit safely. Turn left in the following hallways to find and activate the prison town church side of grace. We are now in our first legacy dungeon. Exit the church and turn right. Run across the roofs and avoid the man serpent by circling closely around its left. Then drop down and cross the bridge. Keep an eye on your stamina. Stop sprinting to let it recover between enemy encounters so you can run, jump and dodge when you encounter the next one. You can avoid the man serpent here by jumping over the cages on the left. Enter the guest hall through the left side, take a left turn and keep your distance to the enemies waving their hands. That can and will hurt you. Jump down the stairs and turn around to follow the hallways ahead. Turn right and turn right again if you want to activate the guest hall grace. 
exit the building and drop down. Don't jump or you might land in the lava. Run up the steep incline to the right of this building to find a somber smithing stone 6 on its roof. Turn around, drop down and follow me up another set of stairs. Crouch by pressing L3 and scout ahead for a roaming man serpent. Wait till it went to the left and then crouch into the elevator. We are vulnerable here for a few seconds, so we want to stay undiscovered. Turn right to find a somber smithing stone 5. Go back and up the stairs where you want to avoid another enemy. Like before, you can dodge this enemy by just running past him very tightly. Push the lever to activate the shortcut. If the enemy from before is still chasing you, then you can also perform a quick quit out. Alternatively, you can also use the nearby grace to exit combat. Then fast travel back to the earth tree gazing hill. Ride down the hill southeastwards to find a soldier encampment. In the trunk of one of the carriages you can find a hidden chest. Open it and pick up the Great Shield Talisman. This will be of great use on some of the later bosses. Then follow me east to activate the Altus Highway Junction side of Grace. Travel further east where you can see a massive set of stairs. We want to ride along the left side of these stairs to avoid all the soldiers roaming the area. There will still be a lesser rune bear where we travel, but you can safely avoid it by staying close to the northern cliffside and you can just ignore the poison spewing giant Miranda Sprout. Pass by behind these two tree sentinels to completely avoid them. Even if they do notice you, they will always start battle with a long animation and won't be able to catch up to you afterwards. Pick up the two golden seeds next to the outer wall phantom tree grace and then follow the main path northeast. Don't go up the center of the stairs to avoid the gargoyle that will try to ambush you. At the top of the stairs you will find another phantom tree with two more golden seeds resting below. Pick them up and traverse the battlefield north until you reach the outer wall battleground side of Grace.
travel east and up more stairs to make your way towards the capital city. You will come across more golems shooting arrows. They are targeting the other enemies so you will be fine. They might decide to target you after their initial barrage at which point only one of the golems can still hit you and it will most likely miss. If you want to be extra safe then you can't quit out right before they shoot a second time to reset their lengthy aiming animation. Turn right to spot your next target, the Draconic Tree Sentinel. Quit out where you will be positioned behind the enemy when you load back in. Now it is time to take down this boss with poison just like you are used to by now. Defeating this boss is one of the three requirements for entering the royal capital of Lyndell and this is also where we want to use our second gold pickled foul foot to obtain a total of almost 70,000 runes. Use it roughly when the damage indicator reaches 600 on the last poison proc. Then you can switch the Astrologer's Staff for the Meteorite Staff and switch back the Two Finger Heirloom for the Crimson Amber Medallion. Activate the newly accessible Capital Rampart Side of Grace and rest at it to access the level up menu. We can now level Intelligence to 40 and put the rest into Vigor. This will allow us to comfortably go through the section that is required to unlock our rune farming spot, which will be our next major goal. Fast travel to Stormhole Shack and follow me inside Stormvale Castle. Avoid the main path here to completely bypass the ballista. From now on you don't have to reload backup saves anymore after you die. That is because we are now appropriately leveled for the remaining section till we are able to reach the rune farming spot where we can regain any lost runes very quickly anyways. To your left you can find the castle ward tunnel grace. Rest at it or simply quit out to reset the enemies following you. Then summon sorcerer Rogier. This will increase the following boss's health, but will also serve as a perfect distraction which will make up for that. While waiting for him to fully spawn in, press up on the d-pad to choose Rock Sling as your spell and press down on the d-pad to select the Spirit Jellyfish Ashes. Press square to summon your Ashen Remains and then back off. We now have two summons to distract the boss. That is their only role. All bosses will generally go after whoever hit them last or by who is closest to them. So try to keep your distance and attack only when the boss is not aggressive towards you. You will deal quite a bit of damage due to our high intelligence and you will be able to survive several hits thanks to our armor, our talisman and leveling vitality. If he does target you then simply spam circle while backing up to give the best chance of avoiding attacks. Be ready to press down on the d-pad to switch between your flasks to heal your HP and FP. You can easily remember, the red flask heals the red bar and the blue flask heals the blue bar. Defeating Margaret the Fell Omen will pop the trophy Margaret the Fell Omen and also rewards you with a talisman pouch, allowing you to equip a second talisman. A 
equip Redagon's Sword Seal and make your way to Stormvale Castle proper. This talisman will increase the damage we take by 15%, but also raises our vitality and endurance by 5 levels, which effectively leaves us with a boost in equip load and stamina. Feel free to use the Stormvale main gate grace before entering the building. Talk to gatekeeper Gostok and answer, no, I'll use the main gate. The path through the main gate is way faster and fairly manageable within a few tries. Make sure to have your Crimson Flask ready to heal and enter by hugging the left wall and constantly rolling. Quickly let your stamina replenish once you're at the bush and then run along the right wall. As long as you don't stop running, you are safe from here on. Heal if you do get hit and just keep running. You won't be shot here anymore. Follow my path exactly to not aggravate the Lion Guardian too early and then enter the gateway to the east where you will want to activate the Limgrave Tower Bridge Side of Grace. Feel free to rest and replenish your flasks before heading back inside the castle. Follow the path deeper inside where there are more ballistas shooting at you. Again you want to hug the right hand wall and you will be safe. Continue staying close to the wall until you can enter a small chamber. Quit out here to reset all enemies chasing you. Talk twice to Nefeli Lu so she appears as a summon for the upcoming boss fight. How utter this graft is tainted them. If you I ask you call the winds room certain. Exit the chamber and turn right to find another golden seat. Then run up the stairs, past the giant, and reset the game once again. You can also find the secluded cell grace to your right. Summon Nefeli Lu and wait once again till she is fully spawned in. This boss plays out very similar to our previous one. Start by summoning your Ashen Remains and then cast Rock Sling from a distance whilst your summons distract the boss. Around half health, the boss will transition to phase 2. He will always start with a sweeping fire breath that can easily be dodged by just running towards him. Defeating Godric the Grafted will pop the trophy Shardbearer Godric and also rewards you with your first great rune and the remembrance of the Grafted.
Do not use remembrances until I tell you to. Now fast travel to Limgrave Tower Bridge. Head east and run straight across the bridge to reach a teleportation device at its end. There will be golems attacking you, but don't let that bother you. Just counter heal and you will be able to safely make it across. Enter the Divine Tower of Limgrave and use the elevator to reach the top, where you can restore Godric's Great Rune. This will pop the trophy Great Rune, and obtaining two restored Great Runes is also required to enter the royal capital of Lindell. We can now reach our rune farming spot, but before we do so, we first want to pick up a talisman that permanently boosts our rune acquisition. Fast travel to Estray from Caled Highway North and head northeast to find the abandoned cave. Make sure to time your double jump well. A late second jump will make it very easy to reach the entrance. Feel free to use the grace here and to then follow me through the tunnels. We absolutely want to avoid catching Scarlet Rot as that will very quickly burn through our health and make it basically impossible to clear this area. Here you want to copy my jump to avoid all the Scarlet Rot. There are sections where it is very dark, but it is still easy to navigate by just hugging the right hand wall. If you do get poisoned or rotted, then feel free to let the enemies kill you to try again. You can set up a backup safe in front of the fog gate so you don't have to make your way here again in case you die. This fight will be a little trickier as it's a double boss fight. Enter and summon your ashen remains. Then try to take out the clean rot knight spear as fast as possible. He can block which will make it harder to kill him quickly. Try to get to the other side of the arena once the clean rot knight sickle spawns in to have more room to evade. Always focus on one boss at a time. You might get unlucky and have them both target you at once, in which case they might simply overpower you. Just be patient and try again if that happens. 
This fight is also not mandatory for this guide. It will simply speed up the rune farming process. Beating the Clean Rod Knight Sickle and Clean Rod Knight Spear Duo rewards you with the Gold Scarab Talisman. Switch it in by replacing the Crimson Ember Medallion and now all rune acquisition is boosted by 20%. Fast travel to Table of Lost Grace by opening the map and pressing triangle followed by a square. We can now talk to finger reader Enya to open up the quest line that is required to reach the rune farming location. Are you iron? Let grey anchor until it will drag you across the far but so brave seek to become little. Fast travel to fallen ruins of the lake and head west to find Rose Church. Talk to Vare, who is standing next to the entrance, and answer, they didn't seem right. Aha! My doubt. The words are truly. I believe even were. That's the part. Talk to him again to obtain five festering oh, bloody fingers, and then fast travel to Altus Highway Junction. Give it a try. And if it drive high. Follow me north as we make our way to Wrythe Blood Ruins. Right away you can also pick up another golden seed. Drop down here until you find the second Church of America, where we will find another sacred tier. Afterwards, follow me further northeast to find yet another golden seed deep within the forest. From here, turn slightly west to find a spirit spring near the collapsed bridge and use it to reach the road of iniquity. Follow it south until you finally reach the Wrythblood runes. Prior to patch update 1.08 you were required to use the festering bloody fingers to invade three other players via online play. This is no longer required. And we can now invade Magnus the Beast Claw here at Wrythblood Ruins to reach the requirements instead. Feel free to set up a safety safe before invading him since the way here is quite long. You can comfortably take care of Magnus by keeping some distance and using Roxling. His incantations are not very powerful, but do watch out for his physical attacks as some of them can one-shot you. Vanquishing Magnus the Beast Claw advances the quest line and also rewards you with another Somber Smithing Stone 6.
Now we can simply jump off the cliff to travel back as we are currently surrounded by enemies and quitting out would not help us. Fast travel back to fallen ruins of the lake and travel to Rose Church to interact with Varia once again. Answer, anoint me and you will obtain the Lord of Blood's favor, which now has to be soaked in a maiden's blood, so fast travel to Grand Lift of Dectus. Exit the building and turn south to make your way uphill. Close by you will notice a tower with a flame appearing on top. This will inflict you with madness while you are in its line of sight. Don't worry about it and simply have your healing flask ready as you will take a hefty chunk of damage once the status bar fills up. It won't be enough to kill you as long as you stay above half health. Turn west here to cross through the frenzied flame village and eventually reach the church of inhibition. On the way there you will be invaded by festering fingerprint Vike. Just run inside the church to quickly activate the Church of Inhibition side of Grace before he catches up and then simply let him kill you. Pick up the sacred tear and then interact with the dead maiden on a chair to dye cloth with maiden's blood. This unlocks the final step we need from Varys questline so fast travel to fallen ruins of the lake and make your way to Rose Church one last time. Talk to Vare and then offer your finger. And with this, a knight. Now, this no <laughs> Oh, good heavens. Clench your teeth or something. <laughs> Never forget that fee for it is what <laughs> you have. Finally, talk to him once more to obtain the Pure Blood Knights Medal and then fast travel to Leonia Lake Shore. A med with the power to I've gone, but you mustn't the meeting must luminary we must. You can now use the Remembrance of the Grafted to obtain 20,000 runes. Then talk to the nomadic merchant and use 13,980 of those runes to purchase the maximum of 699 arrows. Your new surprised you. No matter why, dang. Oh, but don't. Uh. Uh. 
now you can use the Pure Blood Knights medal to reach Moquin Palace. This is a very late game area which is perfect as this lets us access some very powerful tools. First, follow me to activate the Dynasty Mausoleum entrance side of Grace. Then make your way into the palace. Some of the common enemies around here will sprint towards you and explode in blood, which will cause hemorrhage. Similar to madness, you will take a chunk of damage once the status bar fills up. The palace innards will be very dark, but there will be only one enemy here that poses a threat. Go straight until you reach a junction. Take a left and then take a right on the next junction. There will be an enemy spawning here, but you can just ignore it. Take a left here and then go up the stairs to your right. Then just run straight towards the exit. There will be another enemy spawning here and he might follow you. Quit out if he gets too close. Activate the Dynasty Mausoleum Midpoint side of Grace and then turn right to spot an altar. Surrounded by enemies you will find a chest containing a somber ancient dragon smithing stone which is the plus 10 version of the upgrade materials. It might take you several attempts to open and loot the chest. Behind the altar you then want to drop down onto a rock formation where you can snatch another golden seed off a corpse. Now fast travel to Dynasty Mausoleum entrance. Just jump off the rocks if you are still in combat. Head north and travel clockwise around the wall to your right. You will eventually get invaded but don't concern yourself with that. Pass by the blistered giant crow and you will find the Halic Drake Talisman plus 2 near some gravestones. This will greatly boost our defense towards holy attacks which is very helpful when dealing with the final boss fight. Just jump off the cliff afterwards as you cannot quit out while being invaded. Now travel north again to go around the cliffs, but head southeast once you can, to reach and activate the palace approach ledge road side of grace. Rest at it to reset the enemies chasing you and then switch the finger seal for your longbow. Use it to shoot the blistered giant crow across the chasm and have it fall to its death by trying to chase after you. You aim by holding L1 and shoot by pressing R1. 
it will take some time until you can consistently hit the crow, but you will get better at it. Killing the crow will drop 13,245 runes. We require a total of 3,520,731 runes, which took me 1 hour and 10 minutes. It's very boring, but it's definitely worth it. We want to level Vigor and Mind to 40 to reach the first soft caps for both stats and get a lot of HP and FP. You can level these to 60 if you don't mind grinding for another hour. We then level Endurance to 25 as that is enough to not go over medium equip load with our final build. That allows us to stay nimble and makes it more likely for panic dodges to be successful. Finally, we level Intelligence to 60. This is the minimum requirement to use the Comet Azor Sorcery and is also the first soft cap for Intelligence. We will level Intelligence further as we progress through the game. You can of course level this now as well. Just note that anything above 83 will not make any difference for our build. Unequip the longbow and equip the remaining parts of the beast champion armor. Finally, you can switch back the gold scarab for the crimson amber medallion. You can also keep the gold scarab. This will give you slightly less survivability, but you will be able to level slightly higher than me. Fast travel to Church of Inhibition and make your way southeast, where you will get invaded again. Just run away and towards the tower you can see ahead of you. Jump down and onto the wall behind the tower where you can find another stone sword key. Pick it up and drop down before heading further southeast to reach the minor earth tree where we want to take down the Earth Tree Avatar. Summon your Ashen Remains and quickly take care of the boss with Rock Sling. When it creates Light Spheres, you want to get ready to spam dodge, but in my case it didn't even target me. Beating this Earth Tree Avatar will reward you with the Magic Shrouding Cracked Tear, which, when mixed in your Flask of Wondrous Physic, boosts your magic damage output by 20% for 3 minutes after consumption. Now fast travel to Volcano Manor to find the other desired ingredient. Exit the building and go straight until you pass the third fire on your left, at which point you can take a sharp left turn and drop off the cliff. Follow the road underneath the Volcano Manor where we want to take out the Finger Creeper as it always drops a somber smithing stone 4. Pick up its drop and feel free to rest at the Road of Iniquity Grace close by. 
Then make your way east to reach the minor earth tree of Mount Galmir, where we want to take down the ulcerated tree spirit. You can either take it down with rock sling, or hide behind it to take it down with poison. The first option is faster, the second is safer. Beating this ulcerated tree spirit will reward you with the Cerulean Hidden Tier, which, when mixed in your flask of wondrous physic, grants infinite FP for 15 seconds after consumption. Fast travel to main academy gate and that concludes this episode. I will see you in the next one.